Are you part of a nonprofit organization, a youth group looking to raise cash for your cause? Stay tuned at the end of this video to learn how you can bring the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation to your town live, featuring the superstars and legends of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Portland. On Saturday, August 31st, feel the thrill of WWE Live. The age of Rollins is here. And we are going to burn it down. See Seth Rollins collide with Baron Corbin for the Universal Championship. Plus, Becky Lynch takes on Lacey Evans for the Raw Women's Championship. And don't miss AJ Styles and Braun Strowman. It's WWE Live on Saturday, August 31st. Tickets and WWE Superstar Experience packages are available. <laughs> This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world. I'm Dan Marati, joined I'm by Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. If you missed him at WrestleCon, fans, we had a lot of fun in New York City, did we not? We had a marvelous time. You know, to see all the wrestling fans, not only from the USA and Canada and, and, and South America, we had, we saw fans from Europe, all over Asia. I mean, people came from all over the world to see this most one of the most spectacular events in the world, WrestleMania. Short of aliens, we saw just about everybody. And with been, some of the people that were wandering around Times Square, even uh, that's debatable. We, have, we had a few aliens running around too, I think so. All right, Tony, we had the they question. They're called Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Crime time? They're aliens. They're aliens. They look like aliens to me. They don't look like anything from this planet. Well, I like crime time. They were good guys. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Money, money, yeah, yeah. Money, money, yeah, yeah. But the reason I say the alien, they don't know good American music. American music ain't no Brooklyn, Brooklyn, huh, huh, hey, hey, huh, huh. American music is put another log on the fire, cook me up some bacon and some beans, go out to the car and change my tire, wash my socks on my old blue jeans, and then I'm always nice to your kid sister. Don't I take a drive in every night? Don't I warn you when you're getting fat when a man can't love a woman more than that? Well, Tony, as you said at WrestleCon to someone, it's not about the sale ratio. It's all about the yada fellatio. Is that that's the way right, it goes? That's right, my brother. All right, that, there you that, go, Tony. That's right. That's all right, right. <laughs> we heard from a good friend of ours in the land down under New Zealand, Chase Fenner. Uh, he wanted to know, Tony, what you thought about one of our fallen friends from not too long ago, the legendary King Kong Bundy we lost. Ah, that break my heart. I mean, I, I'm, I'm so heartbroken over the loss of uh, uh, Bundy. You know, uh, I, I remember him uh, uh, when he first started. Uh, he wrestled on his real name. Chris Canyon at right, first. He had huh? long hair. Well, a lot of people don't know. He had a beautiful head of hair. He was not bald naturally. He shaved his head. Yeah. But, 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 he, but he had hair. And uh, believe it or not, uh, when he wrestled me, I press slammed him. And, 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 they were, and they said, Tony, how did you get Bundy up there? And I said, he jumped. They said, you kidding me? I said, no. I said, this guy, you know, guys like him, there were very few guys. There was Crusher Blackwell, uh, King Kong Bundy, Bam Bam Bigelow. These are guys that were nearly 400 pounds that could move like a person a third of their weight. Bundy always had been very agile, and when you wrestle with him, he goes up and down. I mean, I gave him hip tosses. I wrestled him many times, hip tosses. Wrestling Bundy was easier than wrestling Johnny Ross, you know. And Bundy was just, he was just meant to be, and you couldn't find a nicer person. Well, I tell you, Tony, I was disappointed. I don't even know if I mentioned this to you, but I had reached out to Bundy about joining us at WrestleCon this year, uh, which would have been even more sad if we were oh. expecting him to join us, you know, at the booth 
all weekend in New York City. But uh, he was a guy I got to know a little bit, thanks to Boston bad boy Tony Rumble Century Wrestling Alliance. Yeah. Uh, he competed for Tony on a number of occasions, and I would have loved, I tell you, to have had him more than anything in this very studio. Yeah, and, and some of the story Bunny could tell you about uh, how he started off in, in pro wrestling. Like I say, he came along much later than I did. He came along in the early 80s, mm -hmm. because I wrestled him, I think it was in 1980, in Allentown, Pennsylvania. That's where Vince used to do his uh, all of his TV taping in Allentown and Hamburg, Pennsylvania, once every three weeks. And, that, and then I didn't see Bunny no more after the TV taping until they brought him back as uh, King Kong Bunny. And then we we always been the best of friends. He even had worked for me at the time uh, when I had uh, Atlas Championship wrestling up in Maine uh, back in the late 90s. Yeah. Uh, 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 Bundy was one of my uh, main attractions. I used to fly Bundy in. It was always pleasant to do, to do business with, always smiling, always laughing, always joking. And he goes in the ring and he always gave his best. And I, the last time I saw him was in Philly, the icon of wrestling. Mm -hmm. And it was a buddy of man to call him Big Ray. So I said, Bundy, this is a friend of man, Big Ray. He said, any friend of Tony Atlas is a friend of man. He pulled out one of his action figures. He signed it and gave it to Big Ray. Oh, wow. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Now he gave it to Big Ray, right? To just, just like that. I told Ray, I talked to him on the phone not too long ago. And I, I said, Ray, don't get rid of that. I said, because that's going to be the last autograph you get from Bundy. He said, why is that? I said, Bundy's gone. He said, you kidding me? He said, we just saw the guy two months ago. Well, Tony, I hate to send you those text messages, but I, I know it's you like sad. to know. Yeah, and, and Bundy, for those that, that got an opportunity to meet King Kong Bundy, y'all met a wonderful individual. He was a, he was a real sweetheart. And I, I can't think of anybody that uh, uh, could say anything wrong about him. I mean, he never hurt nobody, never did nothing about he was a shrewd businessman. Yes. And a lot of people would complain about he he had a certain price that that he would work for. And and he would not relinquish from that. You know, he wanted a, a certain amount of money. A lot of promoters didn't uh didn't like that. But hey, everybody got their price, you know, or what they feel they are worth. And he felt he was worth a certain amount of money, and a lot of promoters didn't like that. But as far as among the wrestlers, I don't know any wrestler could say anything bad about King Kong Bundy. Like I said, he was one of my favorites when I first started watching WWF back in 1986. He was a great heel. Been in business. Him yep. with Bobby Heenan and John Studd, I thought, yeah. was a great trio all I together back so then. Too, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, just a few years later, when I'm in my early high school years, to have Tony Rumble bring him in. Yeah. And here I am sitting from a guy that I had his action figure when I was a kid, and I watched him at the Boston Garden in person. And here I am talking to him. And how did he treat you? Very good. You See? know, he had kind of a sarcastic sense of humor, but yeah, you know. He's from Jersey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know Jersey. You know, they got, they're a little bit different down in Jersey. He, um, he had several cats that needed to be adopted. I don't know if you heard about that. I believe he had 10 cats. Oh, you like cats? He was a big cat guy, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, and the cats were left kind of homeless after oh, he wow. passed. So they that were, was a broken heart. They did not, well, I don't think he knew he was dead. Yeah, but I'm talking about when he got ill, I, I bet he worried a lot his last few days here about what was going to happen to his animal. Because most animal lovers that I know, they they very uh, sympathetic uh, about their the animals. You know? Do you have any pets, Tony? No, um, I, I bought my wife for, uh, some animals, and when they die, it just it just rips her apart. What kind of an animal? Oh, it, it, first, I started off having uh, uh, parakeets. And then they died, so she didn't want no more birds. And I bought a fish, they died, she didn't want no more fish. And then we got a puppy, and he got hit by a car, she didn't oh, want no geez, more dogs. Oh, jeez, Tony, yeah, what yeah. luck do you have with these pets? Yeah, yeah, well, she, the, the, <laughs> she don't realize their life expectancy is not, you know, like a human. Yeah. Just like if you, give, if you got a child, if you're lucky, you know, today you could lose a child six years after you give birth to it with these, with these knuckleheads running around killing everything. But normally, you know, you're going to have that child for as long as you exist. Yeah. But then when you have a dog, you know, after about 10 years, you pretty, and you it's really sad. attach after it's 10 sad. years. So, so if he makes it to 15 years, if you can have a dog for 15 years. Oh, I would have loved for my dogs to have made it to 15. If 15 yeah. years. I mean, that you know, been great. So you're lucky if you get 10 years out of an yeah. animal. And then a smaller animal, the less time you have with them. And you become so attached to them. So the Atlas dog ran into the street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We only had it for about a, a week. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, at least he didn't become too attached, I guess. We did. I, I mean, for about a week, somebody, we bought, we, the people had some puppies, 
And the guy gave my wife a puppy. She had a little puppy. It was a free puppy. Yeah, it was a free puppy. It didn't cost us nothing. And we were going to say, well, we got to go get him his shots and all this and that stuff. We're trying to find out what all we need to do with the, we were going to take him to the vet. And, and then she sat him down one day and to open up the door. and He ran. Oh, that's off. sad. That's sad. Took off, got out. Got out of the got out in the, out of the in, in the street, and got hit, and the car didn't kill him. Just ran over his back leg. He crawled. Oh, he ring. couldn't walk. Oh. Yeah. So so we, you know. It was for the best. Yeah. It, yeah, was, it, was, it was sad watching him drag himself around the house. Always. In oh, pain. you kept him for a little while. Yeah, after well, that. he he was pulling himself like you know, with the front paw dragging the back paw. He was always in pain. And we took him to the vet, and the vet said it was best to you know put him down. Yeah. yeah. Well, any memories about King Kong Bundy? You guys were part of that wild boom era in WWF. He returned, I think, in late 84, and yeah. you were there for well, almost there two years story. after that. I what don't know if, if he would appreciate me telling it, but... He's not going to be offended We now. was in uh, Madison Square Garden. you probably seen the match on, on, on YouTube or something. And uh, Vince wanted me to go five minutes and lose. So I'm wrestling. Bundy said, hey, well, take it home. I said, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes went by. Bundy go, are we going home yet? I said, no, not yet. We went 20 minutes. You went 20 minutes with Bundy? Was he blown up at that point? No, oh, no. Really? No, no. Vince was mad like you would not believe. So, you know, we all went in the match. We go shake yeah, hands yeah. With, the, with the other guy. So I was going in the room to shake hands with Bundy thank for the match. And I hear Bundy say, I don't know what Vince said to him, but I hear Bundy say, say he said, I'm a worker, not a fighter. He said, if Tony <laughs> don't want to go home, he said, if Tony don't want to go home, I'm not going to fight with him out there. <laughs> he said, I'm not here to fight with Tony Atlas. He said, I'm here to make my money and do my job. He said, but I wanted only five minutes on that match. Because in the garden, if you go out the certain... The curfew, right. I forgot about the curfew. Yeah. I did. I went over the curfew. Well. I did a lot of bad stuff. You did. I'm not bragging about it. It hurt me in the long run. You know, I wish I had did things the whole You're just sharing lot. your experience. I wish I laid down for him in four and a half minutes, say, Vince, the 30 suckers. Hey, yeah. Vince, I got, I got you 30 suckers out of that, you know. <laughs> but at that time, I was thinking about, I ain't letting nobody beat me in five minutes. I'm you were worried about it. your credibility. All right, Tony. Any final thoughts about King Kong Bundy? Did you ever travel with the man up in Maine for your shows? Yep. Uh, uh, I, I know that, that uh, well, not only is it him and a lot of guys his side, they used to have trouble uh, sleeping. Mm -hmm. they, they would, Bundy be sleeping, and he just stopped breathing. Really? Yeah. Wow. Scared the hell out of you. Then he started back. You know, they, they all had, and, 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 and you, and you, you got to get used to the cold weather because they hot all the time. Yes. So when you ride with him, it could be 20 degree outside. And he wants he the window, window down. down. And the air conditioning on. And you like. And then he go to the hotel room and he would, he was like, man, it's hot in here. They turn it, crank that air conditioner up. Well, you actually <laughs> shared a room with Bundy. Well, it's a couple of times you have to, yeah. Why? We, well, sometimes you go to the hotel, there ain't no room. Oh, I see. Right. So what the wrestler would do is say, go to another hotel. Say, hey, brother. Uh, it's okay. I split the room with you. Like, I. I share a room with the worst person I will share a room with was Jake the Snake. Why is that? Jake had this big old, he got that, he had a, a, a python at first. Yeah. But then they got him a cobra. And what Jake used to do with his snakes at nighttime, he'd put them in the bathtub and put a little water, a little cold water, a little ice, and, and you know, and keep them quiet. To cold water, put them in the safe, his python or whatever snake he had. Well, anyway, I was I got up, I had to go to the bathroom. I'd be drinking that beer. I go in there, I'm sitting on the toilet, just like this. All of a sudden, I looked around. <laughs> that big old pipe thong was looking at me like this. And I'm sitting there, you know, trying to take a crap there, looking at this big old ass snake. So I looked over it on the other side, I looked underneath the seat. There, the pipe thong, I mean, not the pipe thong, the cobra is wrapped around the toilet. 
I'm in this bathroom. So you're trying to move your bowels in this hotel. Yeah, and I got one. I got a, a python looking at me over here, and I got a cobra between my legs. There were two snakes? Yeah, he had two. They were in a separate bag. And they had, sometimes he used a cobra, and sometimes he even used a, a python. Now, so was I, this during WWF time or Independence? WWF, with, with Jake was with WWF. Right. WWF time. Right. So I got up. I didn't bother about wiping. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did ease right up off that toilet. I walked out, the, got out the bathroom. I shut the door so they don't get out. And uh, I got my bag. Jake's a rare guard. I said, I'm going to get my room. So I went and got the room. I took off my underwear. They had, threw them away. Jumped they in were the soiled. Shop. Oh, yeah, they were soiled. Because <laughs> I didn't wipe. I, you know, and I threw them away. Yeah. And, and, then, and then I took a shower. had a, a little choo-choo child. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I went and got a room. And I said, I would never. And then the same, the same thing when you ride with him. He had that thing laying across the back seat. Oh, he'd take them out of the bag? Yeah. Really? Oh, I wouldn't like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and them snakes, man. They, they was everywhere. No. Was he a good handler of the snakes? No, he, he fucked with them all day. He picks on them, make them mad, piss them off. Because he pissed them off so they could jump out of the bag. Otherwise, they'd be, uh, they'd be born. They you ever notice when you open that bag, that snake yep. shoot out? The wrestlers used to go and kick the bag to, <laughs> with the snake in it. And then when Jake go to open it, that's why he always jump back because that snake comes shooting up out the bag, but that got the crowd going. Yeah, it, get, it always got a big part. Get that, get that crowd going. But boy, let me tell you, at 2 o'clock in the morning, and you go sit on the toilet and look, and you see a python... <laughs> You know, a 14-foot python in the bathtub looking at you. And then you look down to grab your pants, to grab your underwear, and in between your legs is a cobra. That is not the best freaking feeling in the world, let me tell you something. <laughs> it's far from being the best now, feeling in the world. The snakes so, were devenomized at least, yeah, right? Okay. And then it was worse when Steamboat had that kimono. Oh, the little alligator? Yeah, he had that damn thing in his room. I mean, you you know, you go to his room and hear that. Now, where would he keep the little dragon? In a cage. Oh, and it was but in it a was cage. in the room. Yeah. I mean, how can you sleep when you know this gigantic ass lizard? You're always getting up, making sure he's in there, you know. You can't sleep around these animals. But Jake would always take the snakes and put yeah, them in, put a them in the bathtub. Now, would that soothe them or something like that? Yeah. yeah. Put them in the bathtub, yeah. Wow, it must have been they put traveling. They put a little, bit of, a little bit of cold water, about that much, and they would just curl up in that water. But that cobra, I guess the python was messing with us up. He don't got out. He got, he was wrapped around the, the toilet. He would curl up right between my legs. Cobra. Mm. Then uh, that, that old head spread about that wide as I was going out the door. The only pet you ever had to worry about was with the rats. But that's a different story yeah, for a different yeah, time. Yeah, but man, I those mean, were yeah. easy to when handle. When you try with anybody with animal, Coco had that bird. The man. bird was yeah. the bird difficult. That the bird was a pain in the ass. Why too. was the bird a pain in the ass? He wouldn't shut up and he quack and he crap anywhere. Did he talk? He would crap on you. No, no, I'm not talking about his bowel movements. Would the bird talk? It would just squawk? And talk and squawking and stuff. You're in bed and it's a... It's <laughs> 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 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> 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 was Frankie ever abused? Frankie a pain in the ass. No, was he ever abused by any no, of the no, boys? Just the snakes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, People, the bo I had heard the boys like to sometimes even shoot the snake up with a little gas. No. They just kick him while he was in the bag. Well, I heard someone, would they, the bulldogs would shoot him up. No. You don't think that no, happened? No, no. All right, fair enough. You were there, not I. No, um, no, anyway, no. back to King Kong Bundy, one of the great superstars of that 80s boom. Um, he had a comeback in the early 90s. Didn't go as well as they had hoped, but he, he certainly was a fixture on the independent scene. How would you like to see the folks remember King Kong Bundy? As one of the... Uh, so I'm, I'm keeping you're keeping me up, but uh, anyway, I would say Bundy was one of the the best assets that this business ever had. You got to realize him and uh, Hogan made a lot of money together. They did. I mean, that was a great promotion about King Kong Bundy versus when they had him hanging off the Empire State Building. Yeah, there. yeah. I mean, I mean, he had a he was one of the people that really uh, responsible for Hogan being what he is because if you didn't have the King Kong Bundy and that type of talent during that period of time to put uh, uh, Hogan over, mm -hmm. he would not have been as popular as, 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 as he, was. he was. So King Kong Bundy had a lot to do with uh, the, the development of WrestleMania and Hulk Hogan. So I know Mike. He, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, uh, he, he was a great, great access to this business. And how many men you know is 450 pounds can move like that? 
at very 450. True. Very true. He was a lot bigger in person than he looked on TV. Oh, he was a even. huge man. Yeah. yeah. He's someone you'd be impressed when you met him very in person. Very impressed with him. Now, we had a, one of our associates in the back, the Hall of Fame of Mark Dustin. He wanted to know, was Bundy a ladies' man? Well, I, let's say I never had any episode or seen any with him. Yeah. You, know. you didn't know of him. Uh, right, right. Wheeling see, and dealing see, with these rats. See, one thing I say on many of your broadcasting, uh, they had what we call clicks. Yeah. There were certain people, when the, when the guys came to town, there were certain guys you would see me ride together all the time. And uh, they had clicks, you know. Some guys would ride by themselves. Like, if you go to WWE the last time I was there, Teddy Long traveled with no one. Other than you. I was the only person he would travel with, and, and, and the boogeyman. And boogie. And boogie. Mark Henry, the only people he ever traveled with was me, Ron Summers, and Teddy. So everybody got, I mean, you could talk Clips. to John Cena. He'd probably tell you he may travel his whole time there, maybe with three different wrestlers, his whole mm -hmm. career. Or he probably ain't traveled with any of them. Or you would ask the big show, the big people say, well, you know, I never traveled with this guy. The only time the wrestler would see each other was in the dressing room. And a lot of times, even in the older day, they all stayed at the same hotel. Right. But now, in today's, uh, in, uh, uh, in today's atmosphere, uh, one wrestler at this hotel, another wrestler at this hotel, another wrestler at this hotel, they don't even stay at the same hotel. Right. You would see them sitting at the airport, and at the airport, they don't even talk to each other. Right. Well, I, I mean, wrestlers are now are more, in my day, it, it was like a family thing. Wrestlers are more as an individual thing. I always surprised when I go to the WWE dress room and I notice how quiet it is. Very quiet. Like you can hear a rat piss on cotton. Yeah. You know, they, that, that what you hear. Yeah, hey, don't hear. Come on, let me hear that. You know, Andre sitting there playing cards. Naked. <laughs> Naked. Playing yeah, breaking gas, playing cards. You know, him and Scolan laughing at Joe. Andre, give me another beer. It was loud. You know, you it was hear, fun. It was fun. I mean, the guys was, was wow in the dress room. Now they go in the dress room like church mice. Scared to talk. I never seen nothing like. That. So it's not the same environment. Right. So I would say the wrestlers are more separate, disconnected uh, to each other. Yeah. Than than we were. Well, I, I asked this, and I know Mark is very friendly with her as well, but. Bundy was a, a good friend of Annie the Ass Eater in Boston. I don't know if you were Who? Annie the Ass Eater. I don't know him. She was one of the, the rats. You don't know Annie? No. She worked at the Hilton? Well, so I'm going to guess she never used her specialty no, on you. No, no. I, 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 I don't want nobody licking that. <laughs> <laughs> That'll well, make me sick. All right, well. Because <laughs> I know what's come out of that. What a tribute to King Kong Bundy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know nobody put their mouth down there. Snakes, birds, and ass I mean, a little toe sucking is okay, but come on now. You know, you're, not, you're talking about a, a, waste, a waste dispatcher there, you know. All uh, right, well, let me. she had a PhD in it. Let well, me tell you, baby. I don't want to go to she that She started school. off with Barry Wyndham and that tongue, oh, I tell you. Oh, boy. Did he kiss her afterwards? I don't know. I wasn't in the room. Oh, boy. All right, wrestling fans, we're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back with more. Stand by. The irresistible force meeting the immovable object. We're friends, Andre, please. Maybe you'll believe this, Hogan. Okay. You will never, ever see it again. Austin face to face with McMahon. Nobody tells Stone Cold Steve Austin what to do or when to do it. And that's the bottom line. Neither of these superstars is leaving this match without a few scars. The story will end with me becoming the Universal Champion. I don't think I've ever seen two more evenly matched competitors in my life. WWE's Greatest Rivalries, available online or wherever books are sold. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back as we paid homage somewhat to King Kong Bundy in the last segment. We lost a man not too long ago, Tony, that is certainly... I think one of the all-time greats in professional wrestling history, someone that I think in wrestling lore here in the United States is very much underappreciated for some of the great work he did 
in the land of the rising sun, Japan. I'm talking about the destroyer Dick Byer. Wow. Now, you know, I didn't know that. I didn't tell you that he passed away? I remember you. I think you did, but I, I, it slipped my mind. But yeah. that's, I mean, you talking about a guy that got a long history as rest. I mean, he goes all the way back to the 60s, the oh, 70s. Oh, before, yeah. Way before. And Dick Byer, I mean, he was, I mean, he used to go to the Hall of Fame and up in Amsterdam, New York. Yeah. And he was there all the time. I mean, you you talking about, uh, I, I, I don't know that much about him because he was a little bit before my time, but I had met him on several occasions and, and a very interested uh, person. And when you hear about guys like Dick Brown who have did so much, there is so many stories that was never told. Right. I would, but, again, love to have had him here. How often yeah. do I say that? And, and you know, Dick Brown and guys like Ox Baker, Ox Baker told me some stories. I go, wow, you know? the way things was and what the wrestlers could do. So, you know, when you got guys that come out of the, 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 the 50s and the 60s, I mean, that when wrestling was uh, wrestling, I mean, these guys were special. Yes. They're very special people. Even when you meet them today, you notice it's, it's a something about them that, just like the, the guys you talking now, the guy that just beat brought, uh, uh, Lester, you're talking about Kofi Kingston? No, here we always got Seth here. Rollins? Oh, my goodness. You don't like Seth Rollins? Well, it, I, I ain't saying I don't like The presentation it. of him. Yeah. Why don't you like the presentation well, of Seth Rollins? Well, you remember they used to have this Hercules. See, first they had Steve Reeves to play Hercules. Yeah. Then Gordon Scott yeah. played Hercules. Well, they looked like Hercules. Then they got this Hercules was coming on TV with Xena. I said, oh, wow, I love Hercules. I got to see this. Then a little skinny 180-pound guy come out with hair on the chest. You know what I'm talking about. I know what you're the talking series about. They put yep, on the TV. TV series, yeah. I can't watch it. And that's how you feel with Seth Rollins yeah. as champion. Now, is it is Seth yeah. Rollins as champion yeah, yeah, or Seth I, Rollins, period? Well, when I see Pee Wee Hermit playing Superman, it's just something wrong with that. Someone, he looked like Pee Wee Hermit to me. Seth Rollins. Yes. Now, I tell you, height-wise, he's right around my size. He's not a slight guy. But what do you weigh, 180, 190? I've never been on the scale with him, but... But uh, what, when I look... I'm, so I, I understand see, your point of view. I see Pee Wee Hermit playing the Incredible Hulk. That's what um, I see. Well, I'm sorry, I gotta go by what I see. Dick Byer was never thought of as Pee Wee Hermit over in Japan. I don't know if you're familiar with this, Tony, but in a match he had with Ricky Dozan, it was seen by... The television rating factored out to about 70% of Japan. Watch this match. That's more than what the Super Bowl see, does in the United States. But see, they had a lot of guys that didn't have height, but it was like, if you saw Mad Dog Vashon, I mean, he wasn't no six-foot guy, but when you look at Mad Dog, he was a fire plug. Dick Brown was a fire plug. I mean, you know, these guys was as wide as that, like Alvin Puskin. He was not very tall, but he was as wide as was high, you know? But it's something about a fighter and an athlete got a certain look about him that tell you that this guy is what he say he is. And when I hear the little girly voice, I, I, I'm sorry, it just don't do nothing for me. I, now, Brock Lexter, I like. I'm talking about Dick Byer right now. We had the Dick, match with Dick, Ricky Dick Dozier. Byer, with, 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 when you, if you saw him in person in his heyday, you know, he was an impressive-looking individual. Great amateur what, background, great, great amateur football background. background. Yeah, what, 200? He was over 200 pounds Absolutely. in his AD? Yeah. And know? the mask really made it for made him. Made it look like it. He had a, the, the missing tooth and the different. Yep. You know, he looked like an old brother or something. And you, you know? want to hear a funny fact? He married two women, and both of his wives were named Wilma. Well, I'll be there. Now, how many Wilmas have you ever met in your life? Never mind be married to two of them. Archie Bunker. He was married to a Wilma? No, that wasn't her name, was it? Edith. No, that was yeah. Edith. Who, it was a woman. Who had one? It was Edith. Edith. Wilma right. was in the Flintstones. Yes. But how many, other than Wilma Flintstone, how many Wilmas do you know? That's it. How many, can you imagine marrying two of them? No. Well, I just think that's kind of a fun That's amazing. Bit. I used but, to. But, but when you look at, if we, when you look at pictures of the old time wrestler, I say the average wrestler during that period of time ranged between 230 and 250. So they were not small They weren't men. small people. They were not small people. But these guys, they don't look like wrestlers. That's no. what gets me. 
I they agree with you. They, they don't fit the paw. I think that's part of the reason why it's the right. overall popularity is down is because it just doesn't look like professional fighters right, in a lot of instances. Look they don't look like they're meant to fight. Where they they look like, I think Kevin Nash made a great analogy. He said a lot of them nowadays look like Abercrombie and Fitch models and little catalogs for clothes. It's true. Yeah. I mean, when you look back, like, you take like to look at the Ultimate Warrior, and you look at Hulk Hogan. And, and, yeah, and, Ultimate and, Warrior wasn't very good, but he was a big muscle-bound yeah, guy that looked like he could have a Jimmy fight. You look at Jimmy and 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 Lex Luger, and George the Animal Steel, and Chief Day. These was all big, impressive-looking men, and wrestling was always a big man sport. And when you when they started bringing in all the little people, you know, it to me, like I said. Serena Williams is bigger and stronger looking than Seth Rowley. Now, when uh -huh. a tennis player got bigger arms than you. That's saying something. That's saying. All right. And you know, I always say about the independence that makes me mad. I tell all the young kids, go to the gym, look the par. When I first started wrestling, I said, when should I know that I belong in this business? He said, well, let me tell you something, kid. He said, go and look in the mirror. And you ask yourself, will you pay to see you? Excellent. And Excellent yeah, point. Will you pay to see you? And if the answer is yes, then yes. If the answer You're is done. no, You're ready. find You've something made else to do. And, and that's what ended up happening in, in the uh, restaurant. they trying to push people on people that people can't really believe in. The world had opened up so much to what is real and what is not real. And in our day, we was able to get away with a lot that we are not able to get away with today because of technology and just the, the education of people are more educated about things uh, that, that you can't slide, pull the wool over people's eyes are, are so easy. And when you get, and, and when I walk into a gym when I first started in the gym, if you had 10 people that was a member of that gym, there was a lot of people. When you watch Arnold Schwarzenegger in 1971, when he won Mr. Olympia, mm -hmm. I think he competed against five or six people. Now you go to the Mr. Olympia contest, you go compete against 500 people. Right. So it's a different environment out there. Sure. And when a guy sat there, I took my wife, when I first met my wife, back in the early 90s, we took her to a show, a Tony Rumble show. And Tony was doing a show for Mario. He was the booker for Mario yeah. up there before Tony started booking. Uh, they did a little show in Lewiston, and I took my wife to it. And I asked my wife, as we drive back home, I said, what do you think of the matches? She said, now she was about 50 at the time. She said, I could whoop half of them guys. She went by what she saw. And if that's no the impression it's making on a 50-year-old right. woman. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the opinion of a 50-year-old. Right. She said, I believe I could whoop half of these guys. So when you ask the people to put down that money, they want to see something impressive. They want to be impressed. They want their money worth, you know? And then when guys come out and do more talking and do wrestling, and they don't look like they, they look like they couldn't whoop their way out of a wet paper bag. You know, I watched that little skinny kid in the ring the other night with the funny looking hairdo and the funny looking clothes, saying that he was WWE champion. I, I don't know what they doing. All right, Tony. Just so they could please a couple of a liberal about having a black champion. All right. Well, Tony, Dick Beyer indeed was a, a champion around the corner, around the world in Japan. Uh, he was Dr. X in AWA, and I enjoyed him being at the and Cauliflower you know, Alley that, Club that reunions. Dr. X mass had to be one of the most popular masses that have ever been out there. I mean, it was in the back of every magazine. The Dr. X mask? The mask, He yeah. would take out ads and sell them. He was one of the first guys to really... Uh, figure out how to monetize himself long before quote unquote gimmicks were popular. He did very well for himself. With I that. believe if you look back in the 70s, yeah, yeah. in the old magazine, they used to have, used to have where you could buy a yeah, doctor. He ran the ad. ads himself. Smart guy. Very smart. Very smart guy. The first guy to sell his own merchandise. You got it. All right, Destroyer, Dick Buyer, we're going to miss you, baby, right now. We're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back with more Wrestling Insiders. Stand by. You think you know your favorite superstar? Did you know about Sasha's favorite cousin? What about AJ's tattoos? Chris Jericho's expensive taste? 
No. You need the book that has everything you want to know about more than 200 of your favorite WWE superstars. It's the WWE Ultimate Superstar Guide. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back. Um, as we noted not too long ago, we had to hit the pause button on some of the episodes we taped and have aired. Tony right now is discussing serious business, I guess. Maybe John Cena Sr. was offering him a free meal of some kind. But anyway, <laughs> we had a nice tribute to King Kong Bundy and the destroyer Dick Byer. Tony, recently we lost uh, a WWE diva that you probably just missed crossing paths with, Ashley Massaro. Who? Ashley Massaro. Don't know who the hell you're talking about. She was a, a Divas champion in the the late 2000s. Mm, only, she was only in, there about maybe three years. She was like a... Five years-ish. She, I believe she won one of the Diva competitions. Yes. She came in. She was given a reasonably good push. Very, very pretty girl. Blonde hair. She had a little pink at the bottom of it. Always um, wore she, the tight bra. And, yeah, yeah. She wrestled at, back when they only gave the women one match. She was at WrestleMania 23 I see the, I see in Detroit the, uh, against Molina. It probably never, at conventions. Yeah, just after her career. Because during the time that I was uh, uh, with Mark Henry and Abraham Washington's show, my number one thing was to stay as far from the women as possible. Why? It was in my contract. It was in your contract that you had to stay away from women? No, about sexual harassment. And you didn't want to potentially put no, yourself in any situation. If one of them said something, I knew I was gone. So the, 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 all through the contract was about a lot about sexual harassment, almost two pages of it. Really? Of, of sexual harassment and racist uh, gestures or comments hmm. was all through the contract. So when I went there, knowing me the way that I like to flirt, <laughs> I'm a flirt. I like to flirt. You are. So flirting today, harmlessly though, I'll say, yeah. it's no you, harmless. You mean no harm I mean, with what Joe you're doing. Biden just showed me there's yeah. no such thing as harmless flirting. Well, I mean, when you get sexual harassment charge for touching somebody on the shoulder, brother, that's rough. The shoulder. It's become soft. Th th that's Do you what think I'm Lanny Poffo ever sexually harassed mm -hmm. himself? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. People. <laughs> You see what we had to put up with here. <laughs> the one track man about Lenny Parker and his strange appetite for himself, himself. <laughs> is involved in every conversation. All I got to say to that, as far as I'm concerned, with me, there was no collusion. <laughs> No collusion. All right, Tony, back to the episode at hand. Very sad. A young girl like that apparently committing suicide before her 40th birthday. She was a mom. Um, maybe you really didn't come across her too much at conventions. Well, when you lift somebody up so high and then you drop them like a bad habit. One thing I learned when I, when I when my career first came to end that regular people, civilians, oh, they treat each other like crap. Yeah. Wrestlers, when I was at, at the top of my game, hi Tony, oh you degraded. We get they get praised Here's your free all meal. the time. <laughs> they, no, they get praised all the time. It's a psychological free thing. Meals. Wait, 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 you get praised. Yeah. You know, everywhere you go. You walk to the arena, you got twenty thousand people. I'll talk to you. Go back to the dress room. All the wrestlers and the, everybody tell you how great and how wonderful you are. Everybody, you walk in, like they say, you do get free meal. You walk to a restaurant, you know, you Tony Atlas, you don't pay. You huck hold, your meal. you don't pay yeah. because you are. We had went into the hotel and, 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 and they would cancel people reservation to accommodate us. Upgrades. Yeah, they Sweets. would upgrade. Yeah, they would upgrade us from coach to first class just because of who we are. You know what I'm saying? The hardest job for any wrestler to do in my day was to spend money. Because everybody, just like if Tom Brady come to your, your restaurant, 
Who going to charge Tom Brady for his meal? Yeah, everybody wanted to, wanted, to wanted to be your friend. Everybody wanted to be your friend. I wouldn't charge him. I'm a bartender, and I would just, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, really? you're Tom Brady. Yeah, 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 yeah you're Tom Brady. No. You, got a, you got a drink. Some well, friend you are. What, what, they, what they do in the olden days that is different than today, there was yeah. no suicide among the wrestlers during the olden days simply for this reason. They would gradually work you down the ladder. Gradually. Now they just push you off the You'll just go the next day. And the, it's the way they do it. They will build you up to tell you, you are part of this company. Don't worry about it. Your job is secure. You go home for your little vacation, you fire before what the, he, Vince is talking to you, and you already fire. Me and Teddy used, Teddy used to laugh about that. Teddy used to say, it's so strange that he said, you don't know how many guys walk around this dressing room right now that's already fired. And they don't know it. And they and when they, they would do it in a way where they leave you with nothing. And another thing, a lot of the people that be, if, you make your money on the house shows. You don't make your money with TV. There was a girl that used to do this. Emma. Emma. She wanted to get a case to put her laptop in. And it was $20. She didn't have $20, but she's on TV every week. See, there's a false narrative out there. You didn't finish the story, though, Tony. It well, happened right in Connecticut. That, being, with me, my experience in wrestling was like being in penitentiary for 20 the, the, years. Are people supposed to Google the end of the story? Well, well my experience was like I was in prison for, uh, uh, for 20 years, and then I was released yeah. with, with, with no, uh, you're on your own all at once. Yeah. First, everything is laid at your feet. And then the rug gets slapped from under you just like that. It's not a, in the older days, they would give you a 30-day notice. Mm. They would set you up with something else. They would let you down easy. Well, to be fair, unless your contract is expiring, they do give the talent the 90-day severance package. I so but you already fired. Right, but you still get it. Yeah, but that ain't the point. The point is this person spent their whole life. They have nothing else to go to, and not to go to. There's nothing to go to. And then well, during the time you're getting that seven, you can't work for any other company or right. set up anything else. Yeah. You have to wait for the three months is over with. Then you can Then you got to go out now and try to pay your bills and fast. To me, else. I think the 90 days is almost more panic ridden than finding out you're getting fired because now you have that calendar. Okay, I have 13 more checks, 12 more checks, 11 more checks, 10 more checks. It's almost like the countdown to doom. You know what huh. I mean? She found success as, a, I believe, a, a radio host in New York and was trying to train to come back into wrestling. She was involved in the concussion lawsuit as well, but for whatever the reason, she decided to, to end her existence, and especially where she has a young kid that's sad. I, I think we, we should really praise Mick Foley and a lot of the WWE divas of the time. I know Lillian Garcia was involved, Tori Wilson, a bunch of others that were her peers, and they raised... $100,000 for the daughter to be able to go through school and apparently live life. So I thought now that was nice. Now, there's another thing that contributed to that suicide, too. Right. And I wrote this in my book. Let's hear it. When I was homeless, yeah. I knew more millionaires than Rockefeller, but could not call not one of them. Do you think? That, no, that's, there's no thing to it. We all know that. We all, as sheep, as Bill Eater, once you leave, you, they won't even answer the phone. So they do more for her in death than they you would own it with is, that, the is that what you're trying to say? No, what happened is once you leave the business, right? not just with the company, yeah. you're also done with the wrestlers. They right. don't even socialize with you no more. They wouldn't even answer the phone. I remember the first time with, with Nick Foley. I, mean, I knew him when he was Cactus Jack uh, with, with Mario Savoldi. Yeah, way Work, back. Yeah, worked way for back. The, the Tony Rumba. So that's how long I know him. When I left WCW, I had his number from WCW because I used to ride with him. He yeah. was my tag department, me, him, and the barbarian. Never pick up the Frugal phone. Frugal men. Never pick up the phone. Really? Never answer the phone. If I call him right now, they won't answer the phone. Really? You're not with the company. Uh, but are you trying to say, Tony, that these people that raised the $100,000 for her did more for her in death than after, in life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they had, they, 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 everybody come running to me, I saw it uh, after the fact. Because out of, I don't know if a lot of guilt or what. But during the fact, if, 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 if more people have, so, have, 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 have worked with her, see, I tried to commit suicide myself. Don't I remember. Think, yeah, I, I, cut, I cut across here, 
But if, if I if I had known how to do it, I'd be there. Then later at the hospital, the police would say, "Well, Tony, if you wouldn't want to do it, you don't go this way. You go that way." And the one police would say, "Don't freaking tell me that." But I was suicidal because to be to come out here in the real world, you you have to be a little more thick skinned Wrestlers and people in the world of entertainment, you get that praise. Yeah. And she's at the height of her career. Yeah. She's not some 40 or 50 year old woman. You can understand it if you had a long career. Right. But these these people, see now they if Vince fired me, I'd go to WCW. But what made me suicide, when Vince fired me the last time, there was nowhere to go. When Vince get rid of these, these wrestlers now, and the, the sad thing about the independent, they don't use them. I go to independent shows all the time. They got a bunch of guys there. They don't use the women. Women, to be a woman wrestler is the hardest. It's tough. It's very, very it's tough. It's similar almost to uh, what was looked at in the territorial days as an African American. Yeah. It was instead of one wrestler, it's one match per se. There's limited opportunity yeah. for them. So women, women were treated pretty much the way African America would would treat it. Uh, that's why I like what Vince doing now because I think they need that exposure. You know, it may not be what everybody want, but eventually, you know, it would take. Well, I think off. it's hurting the popularity, but that's for. A well, yeah, but episode. right mm -hmm. now, but 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 once they, it, it's the only way. You got so many women that that you have to give them an opportunity. How are you going to give? I think you they've got given them the opportunity. You got the fifteen titles, wait, 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 the main wait, event, yeah. all that. Yeah. Wait, wait, you got fifteen women. Yeah. Fifteen women wrestlers that say that sign up. And you only put one match on a week. That's 52 weeks in, in a way. So the, the first woman that wrestled on the show, she got to wait a freaking year for she get on TV again. Well, so, I wouldn't know if I'd go that well, far. Well, that, well, there's no other way of doing it. You only got, you only got, you only got 15 minutes per week for Are a woman. Are you talking about WWE in 2019? Any company. Any company. There's, we're not now. We're now. Much more we're like I said, what, what, that's that what he's doing. It's not a good thing. Now. Yeah, yeah, but that's too what. Much. But that's what it's an he, overkill. Yeah, it's, but that's what he's doing now. Yeah. He's, he's giving them more exposure. But in my day, I mean, it was we very saw, limited. Right, and it been like, and even on the independent. How many independent show you you go and you see a woman match? Usually one match. Uh, usually not at all. Oh, yeah, a lot of the ones I go to, there's not even one. They're not even match. one. They not even backstage. Once they leave Vince, there's nothing for. There was nothing for this girl when she left Vince. The only thing she can get booked for is one of these conventions. That's it. That's all they use her for. Right. They, this girl still harassed her. When Vince got rid of her, she probably never stepped foot in the ring after that. I don't know, but probably she never did. She was did. trying in her age. I think she was either 39 or 40. She was trying to make a comeback yeah. in the fall yeah. to either WWE or any other promotion that probably would have taken her, but she was training in the ring. Yeah, but they, but, but, but they didn't. She wasn't, she wasn't wrestling. She wasn't getting booked. I mean, I was never booked on an independent show with her. I was booked on convention with her. Yeah. And even now, if you go around, look at all these women, you know, like even Mickey Jane was free. I saw it every now and then, but Mickey didn't get a lot of booking, but uh, Brock and Johnson you know, do, I'm be Tony fair, Atkins Tony, do. A lot of the guys, and and we could barely wrestle anymore. Maybe this is a <laughs> different know, story. We did get more booking than Mickey Jane, who's an excellent wrestler. Look I just, at Paul Charner. How many people booked her after when she left WWE? Well, you know what? See? Maybe the wrong episode to bring it up, but her, her asking price was the problem. And her drug abuse was the problem. Mm. Who wants to book someone? Although I want 10, 15 grand. Sure, with Jake the Snake, but they didn't stop from booking him. Well, ah. He wasn't getting 10 or 15 grand. Yeah. Or trying to hustle people for money the way she was. I'm not trying to knock her, but I mean, sometimes the reality is the reality is. The reason why China left in 2001, people say, oh, it was because of the Triple H and uh, China romance. I was with WWE at that point. And the biggest problem with China was she was trying to get a contract equivalent to Austin and The Rock. And she was a major uh, factor in the popularity of WWE, but she was not worth Austin and Rock money at all. So, bye-bye. I hear it was the, the Wonder Woman thing. They didn't want her to do it. I don't know. She I wanted to do know. Wonder Woman. I just think and it's... And they, they told her if she do it, they're going to let her go. If what, what the talk in the dressing room was. Well, no, her contract expired, I think, in May yeah, of 01. Yeah, it did, but, but she wanted to do Wonder Woman. That, well, and that she was wanted, but it was the she money. Wanted she wanted Wonder big, Woman. big money. That's what I heard as well. She wanted a lot of money. I, 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 I know it. I know it is a fact, <laughs> but it is what it is. I'm just sad about Ashley Massaro. 
Uh, did you, you as a fan, did you have any memories of her? Again, WrestleMania 23 in front of 80,000 people, the 20th anniversary of the biggest one yeah, of all, WrestleMania 3. Yeah, it was in that diva stage, yeah. so I wasn't into that whole thing. They had a couple matches, as you said, a week, yeah. um, probably not even at all. So I, you didn't really see her as much. You just saw those sure. divas competitions, those bra and yeah. panties matches. So as a kid, I wasn't into that. I was more into, like, you know, the rough and toughness of it, you know, beating each other up instead of the girls. That's what, yeah. like, kids now my age back then were into. Mm -hmm. yeah. But back then I was into more of the wrestling, and now it's all into the talking. But that's, as you say, for another episode. Well, it, yeah, women's, women's, I, 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 I have said this my whole career, women are the only people in wrestling that I saw get discriminated against. I, it was no discrimination among blacks. If black people say they were discriminated because they're black, they fought a horse pocket. Because you look at all your black stars going all the way back to Boba Brazil. But Moolah and Mae Young never got any recognition in this business until they were senior citizens. Mm -hmm. It's and like almost like they were bigger, like when they were older was, than when they were younger. It was the first May time. Young, it, yeah. I had never heard of Mae Young until yeah. that run. That's what yeah. I'm saying. And she was one of the toughest women around. She trained just about every woman there. And there's a lot of women, George Graver. I, I can name a whole list of great, great. I remember we used to watch the women wrestlers sometimes, and a, a client that build a guy would come out and say, boy, I'm glad I don't have to follow that match. That was fantastic. We had a girl named Heidi Lee Morgan that was probably the, one of the best wrestling women I've ever seen in my life. But she never got, they have never pushed a woman the way they pushed Hogan. Uh, and all these guys that we brag about so much, if you push a woman that way, she would get that same, well, they tried to push Wendy Richter in the main events. In no, the they did. They no, sure no, did. Wait, wait a minute. Sure I was there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, now, now you are on too. this one. Let me tell you about Wendy Richter now. <laughs> Let me tell you about Wendy Richter. Now. Let me tell tell us about Wendy. Wendy Richter. Girls just want to have fun. <laughs> Wendy Richter. <laughs> like Lanny. Wendy Richter and Captain Lou Albano sold that for me. If you ever talk to Cindy Lofter, she was tell you she owe her whole career. To Captain Lou Albano right. and Rendy Rickman, right. because they brought her a whole new. She walked into the arena one night and she saw all the fans in Madison Square Garden, and she had shows there before with other people. Yeah. She never saw that type of crowd except for wrestling. Yeah. She went to all these events she, and she saw all these crowds. The Cindy Lauper, because Cindy Lauper did not make Rendy Rickman. Rendy Rickman made Cindy Lauper. I was there at a in 1989 in in uh, California. And they go to these conventions to sell their program to TV stations. Yeah. Hulk Hogan was there. Lex Luger was there. I was there. I remember Michael Landon was there because I took a picture with him. Dion Warwick was there. Open Winfield was there, who I don't like uh, because she shunned me. Who? Uh, the nice Oprah. Oprah Winfrey? Oprah Winfield, yeah. You yeah. would not let Oprah walk on. No, she didn't give you anything I, I, for I free. I don't want nothing to do with her. I don't want nothing to do with her. But the person, the person that was the nicest of all the people that I met. That that place, to me, was Hulk Hogan and Mike Orlando played Little Joe. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was. It's I one mean, of Pistol Pete Tringali's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jokes. He Highway was. He was. He was, he was absolutely Netflix. fantastic. Kenny Roger was Kenny nice. Rogers, Lou Rawls yeah. was, was nice. She was the only one that uh, 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 Dion Warwick pinched me on the butt. So she thought really? I was cute. Yeah, she thought I was cute. But anyway, make a long story short, I went to say hi to Hogan. He had a real long line. Then I saw Wendy. Her land was longer. About a month later, she wasn't champion no more. Nineteen. She left in 1985. Well, I mean, but but the, they, but the way they took that belt off of her. Well, that was the original screw job. Not much yeah, the, the, yeah, the same way they did her. But but but, but she they was tried just, her around the loop. She headlined house shows against Leilani Kai in 1985, and they didn't draw particularly well. Yeah, but but. She she was great as part of the package. But she of this WWF, what you don't understand. But on her own, they tried to headline with them, and they didn't draw. Yeah, but see, but see, here's what you're forgetting. When it was pushing Hogan, yeah, he was on everything. Right. How many commercials they had the, her on? You, you see, you you look at that. He the, was at the end of the day, he was the face of the company. Could she have been an equivalent in popularity in the push to an Andre, if a Snooker, a JYD? If they, if they sure, gave her, and they, if they gave her, No, they didn't. In short term, it was over like no. fire. Her and no. Cindy Lauper were all over MTV. They were on NBC Saturday Night's but that main was event. It. But they but, were in what many you could argue was the semi-main no event, WrestleMania how, 1. Yeah, but Hover was on everything. He was the face of the company. No, he was no, the brand. No, no, he was made the face of the company. Who was the more money with, Hogan or Wendy Richter? You, 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 but if, if if they if they had ignored him, yeah, the the, the way they ignore her, 
he wouldn't have done what he done. You got to look at all what they put into what him. What was Wendy Richter going to offer anyone long term? A lot. <laughs> if they gave him a chance, I think. She was a good lady wrestler. But again, I've always said there's a big difference between a good women's match in a good professional wrestling match. Brother, I like a good professional wrestling match. A good women's match to me is a shrug of the shoulder. Brother, At least it wasn't brother, bad. I see Vince my man take a guy in a fucking clown suit made him big. I saw him take a dead man and make him big. Don't the clown and Undertaker. You could make, the media could make or break anybody they can. If you put as much effort into the women, one woman, that you put into the guy, how they much more push could they have given Wendy Richter than they did? A lot more than they did. She was on MTV constantly. She was all over the NBC Saturday Night's main event. Again, she was just Then why as, cut it off? Because why nobody it can. Off in the leg? I get, no one wants to say it because of this women's revolution Bob we're in Bob right Bob, now. They, they nobody push can. Him, they push a lot of guys that nobody cared about. He they sold out them. MSG more often yeah, than the other champion. Saying, all through wrestling, we had a guy named Paul Jones that couldn't draw a fly with a handful of shit, but they pushed the hell out of him. Uh, I, I have seen. I'm talking about Wendy Richter in particular. With, no, what I'm trying to show you the comparison yeah. to the guys that that drew less money than Wendy, but they still pushed them. I've told you before my thought process. They pushed them until they work. People watch professional wrestling for they want to see action and simulated violence. There are a lot of people that Bob don't Backlund enjoy seeing draw, women in a simulated violence Bob position. Bob Backlund did not draw as much money. As, as superstar Billy Graham, but they still took the belt off of Billy Graham and put it on Backlund because that's who they wanted to push. They could give a red ass about. But he at least drew with the belt. Not like, but not like superstar. No, he didn't. You're right. Uh, you're 100 like right. You're 100 right. Said. About not like Billy Bruno. should have had a bigger. That run. didn't matter to them. That's who they wanted. You had to be in the click. The rest is all about click. If you're not in with them, they could give a red ass about how talented you are. We used to always say the best wrestlers was always the jobbers. Well, they knew how to get the guys up. I've heard that one before. S.D. Jones lost every night. And you can ask Tony Guerrero or anybody with the WWF, S.D. was the most popular wrestler yeah. in the WWF. Yeah. But they still, didn't, they still wouldn't push All right. him. All right, Tony. Because he was not in their plan. He wasn't in the click. All if right. you're not in the click, I don't care how good you, I don't care how good you draw. They don't care are about that. Are we in that. the click? Me and you? Yeah. Yeah, we click it, baby. Right. What about him? He's a, he's, he's a young click. All right. All right, we're running out of time. Again, I just want to send the condolences along to Ashley Massaro. I think it's wonderful what the ladies of wrestling did, what Mick Foley did to raise so much for her daughter. But like Tony said, it's sad that so much was done for her after Afterwards. her life than during mm -hmm. her life. But yeah. that's, that's, she needed somebody that's certainly a different story for a different yeah. time. We could do many yeah. episodes on that. For Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, our friend here, I guess the new prodigy that's kicking me. Do you have it's something you prodigy. want to say? No. Oh, I thought you were trying to get your shit in. All right, I'm Dan Marotti. No. Until we speak again, folks, you and yours, be well. I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Let us tell you how the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation can help raise cash for your nonprofit cause. Experience the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation live in your city throughout New England, the tri-state area, down through the Carolinas, out to our friends in the Midwest and beyond. If your nonprofit organization is looking for an interactive turnkey experience while putting the fun into fundraising, you've met the perfect tag team partner to work with every step of the way. The MWF offers a variety of packages for groups of almost any size, from our live events at the Boston Garden, the Kowloon Entertainment Dining Complex, and the legendary Suffolk Downs, to high school gyms and function halls, we've presented live events everywhere and anywhere. Since 2001, the MWF mission has been simple. Keep the kids off the streets. Under the leadership of President David Reese, we bring the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow to your town. Not for a wrestling show, but an event that features action-packed in-ring wrestling, autograph, pose photo opportunities, Q&A sessions, and so much more. It's the best of sports and entertainment. The week of your event, we can add on to the endeavor with anti-bullying campaigns, library meet and greet reads, youth sport concussion seminars, and more. 
A live events are fit for fans of any age from 5 to 95. This fall is part of our new Kids Club program. We offer live event experiences exclusively for the youngest of fans. On the flip side, we can produce a tailor-made event for fans of an older demographic as well. We work with you every step of the way to get the word out to fans near and far on our local television offerings and to over 50,000 fans and growing on our social media platforms. Your success is our success. If your group has had enough of candy bar and wrapping paper sales and has the energy to team with our passionate fan base, bringing the NWF experience to your community is the answer to put smiles on faces while raising cash for your cause. Contact us today to get the ball rolling for your custom-made event that you'll want to bring back year after year to your community. Don't just take it from us. Here are the folks we've teamed up with in the past.